This is Ed, and you're back on Global TV Talk Show. As you can see, today's show is about global HR business, mobile talent, and you're on TV. <laughs> and along with a good friend, dear friend for many years, James Moss, who's today in New York area. Welcome, James. Hey, Ed. Great to be back. Great to see you again. Thank you. So I saw uh, on Facebook, I think you posted a picture or two with your daughter walking around New York. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, I have um, my my daughter is uh, lives in Australia. Uh, she's a 31 year old tech entrepreneur. I mean, she really is very, very interesting what she's doing out there. And uh, she was over on a NASA conference, her speciality is fatigue prediction technology. It's very, very specialized. Um, and she's working with the, the NASA guys on, um, I think, the Mercury project, actually, in 2030. And they're looking at, you know, supporting those guys. So I dragged her over to New York for a few days to catch up. And we had a great time. Yeah, that's great. So I I haven't been in the Metropolitan of Art uh, Art, Art Museum, uh, and I see that you went there. And so, what's that like? I, I mean, are you getting ready for the fabulous ball? I would think it is. I didn't see too much of that. <laughs> we sort of popped in for the last sort of you know, thirty five minutes before it closed and grabbed a, you know, did a Pollock and did a Warhol sort of thing. Uh, it's great. It's I think it's one of the I think it's prob is it the best museum in New York? Certainly for modern art, I think it it really is exceptional. Um, the space is great. The displays are great. The um, the exhibits they they bring on are, are fantastic. Yeah, it's it's, it's you know it's just a really lively happening sort of place. It's great. Uh, that's great. Okay, now let's talk about you and technology. Absolute Relo, everybody can see that logo now, absolutereload.com. So what's new and exciting? Well, quite a lot going on here. Um, where should I start? Our technology just goes from leaps to bounds. Um, in fact, the, the original uh, design and technology was done by our team out in Pakistan, uh, who were excellent. But actually, I've switched the technology team entirely to the United States now um, and based out of New York, supported by my tech guys uh, out of London. Um, and what does that mean? It means that everything's much faster. Uh, the time zones are removed. Um, tweaking, updating, building new modules, which we're look, beginning to look at now. Uh, it's great. Customer support is exceptional. Um, so on the app side of life, uh, which we're just updating at the moment, uh, it's it, it's it's really really great news. Um, in terms of online, we've actually redone and in fact recreated or created a new uh, online portal, which is fantastic. Which means that uh, people who are interested can can actually go to the portal, buy the services of the portal um register on the portal and so on and we can sort of go into gear that way uh, in addition to the mobile technology but the mobile technology is really the core driver uh of of what we're doing and of the way people work and uh, and and relocate these days so lots lots of good things going on on tech uh, lots of uh, new business situations emerging uh, there's some other companies out there sort of in the tech relocation space as well. Everyone is getting great momentum at the moment. Yeah, that's really good. I'm really happy for you. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on in Manhattan. Um, the uh, price, real estate prices are st still going up. <laughs> well, they are. I mean, um, it's, it's interesting because... Uh, you know, we're very active, um, absolute in in New York. We're also very active in London, in fact. But let's let's stick to New York for now. Um, it's winter, <laughs> uh, but the winter is we're we're cracking through that at a pace now. I mean, I think next week's the last week of, of February. Then we're into March, and the spring is around the corner. Um, so what are we seeing? We've seen rental levels come off a bit which is the good news for signees and tenants 
uh, moving particularly into in, into Manhattan and Brooklyn. Um, so rental levels have come down a bit temporarily. Uh, we don't think they're going to stay low for too long. Um, have they plateaued or are they on the rise? Well, the, the problem in New York is that rental stock is still in short supply. Uh, for for various reasons, including landlords um, pulling out of the market for tax reasons, you know, properties just don't wash their face as well as they used to, uh, and they're investing in other areas. So what we what what we are advising our clients at the moment is, if you are moving people to to New York or thinking about moving people to New York, get onto it now, start your preparation now, and get in early. Um, get the deals as soon as they come up and lock in at really good, favorable rental levels. Because we think as the as the spring moves into the summer, uh, we are expecting uh, rents to go go up again. The good news is, though, we hope we'll see new landlords coming back into the market uh, with you know interest rates coming down, hopefully. But we're already seeing mortgage rates uh, coming down, so the investment situation is looking more positive well that's good to know okay so you talked about uh updating and upgrading uh your technology for absolute reload so what does that mean let me just ask you a question i'm i'm a layman and not really a tech at all um but if i were to use absolute reload.com from sitting here in 92101 downtown seaport village san diego uh, and i'm looking for a midtown you know somewhere between uh 30th uh, uh in midtown right in the middle the hardcore yeah. uh, uh between 30 and 90 um what do i do i just type that in 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 absolute reload.com and i get what buildings or i get tips on what neighborhood uh, should be better for me and my uh, particular needs as I've typed them in? Yeah, what you, what you get is you get access to an incredible data knowledge source, okay, which sort of deals with all of those points you've raised. Um, so if you, you, you go to our website, we, we don't plug in a property because we work with the entire market, so we don't list the entire market you know, on a, data, a database uh, through our portals. But what we do do is we um, we ass ass assimilate all the information, we take your brief, we understand what you're looking for, we cover all the points, which is property, uh, it's budgets, getting your stuff over perhaps, um, it's, uh, you know, if it's international, it's registrations and visas and so on. If it's local, um, U.S. domestic, then it's finding the specific, uh, well, the specific, helping you find the specific properties and specific areas that you want to be in and any additional support that you personally need. And this, this is the big point. It's really personal. Um, anyone can go onto the internet and plug in, I know, uh, 56th Street, you know, East, Midtown Manhattan, and all, and put in a number, and all sorts of things would pop up. You could do that on, you know, Street Easy, for example. Um, but you're not necessarily going to really know much about other than what's up there. You're not going to have that inside take on what's happening. Um, a lot of the properties, I mean, Street Easy is quite a good example. A lot of the properties are what I call phantom properties, okay, which means they're put up there by estate agents to entice people to come in. Uh, you know, it's 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 the, the the sort of sprat to catch a mackerel, and then and I've seen this happen time and time again. And all of a sudden, oh, guess what? Well, sorry, that property's just gone. But can I help you with something else? So they get plugged in and they roll through like that. Uh, sort of tricks of the trade. We navigate all of that. We also navigate the area. So we look at very your your brief, the customer's brief, in a very detailed way and help them build it up. So. Where are they working? What's their family profile? What are their needs? Do they need schools? Do they need transport? Are they taking the, the subway? Are they cyclists? I mean, we're putting the whole thing together. If they're traveling, where are they traveling to? Do they need to be near JFK? Do they need to be LaGuardia? 
um, new, I mean, all these different parameters come, where's the head office and so on. Um, you know, post-pandemic, the world has changed. You know, the, the way people work has changed. Mercer produced an excellent report on this recently, um, specifically emphasizing the way people work and how they how they rely on mobile technology in particular to get around and so on. So that is the, the space that we feel. Um, and that we're, we're sort of the hand holding the guide, the safety net, if you like. Uh, we're also the protector of the ROI for companies to make sure that they're getting maximum value um, in the services that they're providing. Um, and that's an important point. Um, I was looking at the IRS uh, tax allowances the other day, as one does, and I was browsing through that and uh, just updating that. And, you know, all the tax breaks for relocation allowances, you know, have not come back. They disappeared in 2017. And, uh, you know, it used to be you could set everything off against all your relocation expenses off, off against tax, which was fantastic. I mean, what a great way of doing it. You can't do that anymore. So what does that mean? It means you really got to watch your budgets. It really means you want the best value for money and you want the most affordable service to do that. And we're 70 to 80% saving on, on you know, traditional relocation costs. I mean, other than shipping. Um, so, you know, the, it's a very, very different world. That's what we do. That's what we focus on. So for instance, uh, in Manhattan, it's such a diverse place. I had never stayed in a rental. I had never stayed north of 65th on the east side. Um, but the last time I was there, I stayed on 96. Mm, right. right right by, um, I think it was third. Yeah. Mm. All right. Right by the, uh, uh, it was a nice area, high rise. I yeah. think they call it Yorkville or something like that, right? That's right. That's but I've right. never been there. But it turns out that it's an upscale area. So, yeah, you know, it's it, it's a great area. Um, one of the interesting things about that side, which is generically referred to as the the Upper East, um, of course, you know, it's not exactly linear and all this stuff. Um, but you know, it's always been a, a very sort of high end, old world housing location. Um, but in fact, it's it's uh, not as expensive now as other locations. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting. I love that part of the world. The subway system is excellent into New York up from 96th and that part coming into town. As of the buses, I think actually I'm a big bus person. Uh, it's just such a nice way of getting around. You just zip up and down. It's, it's terrific above ground. But my point is, is the really expensive areas now uh, in, in New York. It's not the Upper East Side. I mean, of course, that is expensive. But the real areas are like Soho and Tribeca and Chelsea. I was down there the other day um, with some clients. And they're, they're fantastic properties down there. And there. So that's the lower, lower West Side? Yeah, so that's sort of Soho. So you're sort of down uh, in the lower part of town, mid below mid, so I don't know how to phrase this, or two thirds of the way down, um, just north of the financial districts, um, and they they sort of merge together. They're not quite; they're, they're slightly separated. Um, but it's where you have those lovely old warehouses and so on. Um, very fashionable apartments now, um, terrific art gallery spaces. Uh, the whole feel of the place is it's, it's very modern, very alive, very buzzy. Uh, it's it's not old school. Um, it's it's more sort of you know it's it's, it's a newer, younger sort of feel to it. The restaurants are great. Uh, loads of sushi bars down there, stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's a really great part of town and a lot of people, uh, you know, like, like, like to be there. I mean, they, you know, they want, they want the life. Um, it's, so it's, 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 you know, there's so many great locations in New York, uh, to suit everybody really. And, you know, I know quite a lot of people who live up on the West side, the upper West side, 
uh, which is has, again has a totally different feel. You know, it's much more. It's a bit more like uh, some of the 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 areas in London around the parks and stuff. It's just a quieter, slower pace, very well connected type of uh, location. Um, so yeah, there's something for everybody here. Maybe Interesting. Today. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, Soho and Tribeca. Uh, and the other one you mentioned, um, that is just south then of the new uh, high-rise area, right above yeah, the old right. uh, railroad yards. They built all these giant buildings. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. So if you plug in, um, say, Hudson Yards, okay, which is, uh, which is obviously more, well, <laughs> on the west side, um, that goes from... Where does that go from? It gets from quite low down. Um, I think around twentieth, thirtieth, maybe around there, um, and up to where are we? I think we're talking sixties. I haven't got the map in front of me, but it goes up about thirty blocks or so. Um, and yeah, you you know that the, the, the huts and yards. Uh, is is an amazing development. I mean, it's a billion square feet, a billion. Um, the only thing I'd say about it is it's only got one subway uh, station there, which is the slightly weird thing about it. I mean, it's brilliant in all respects, um, but it's it's got the one subway station over there. Um, but it's, so it gets it's, pretty crowded then. It's pretty crowded. Their signage is terrible as well. I mean, I hate to criticise, but being a property <laughs> guy... Um, I feel I can can do it. They they should have taken a look at Canary Wharf in London, where the signage is brilliant. I mean, everyone can find everything, and they've, it's very similar sort of development. Uh, again, that's one subway station, but it works works really well. But they uh, they they need to uh, get the signage sorted out over at Hudson Yards. Okay, the world is going to be watching this, so. <laughs> we'll get we'll get that message out. That's for sure. Yeah, let's get that signage uh, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, let me know who I should target, distribute this show to, and uh, <laughs> I'll knock down some doors, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so let let's talk about relocation. Are, 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 you know, are companies willing to spend on relocation, or is it more or less project assignments? And go go and live there, or do business trips back and forth, rather than shipping stuff. And... Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's changed a lot, and I think companies are still struggling, uh, very much so as to how to handle it, which is really the needs of their talent, the way their 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 talent works, and the generational side of that, and their expectations. Um, so what we're finding, what we, what we see out there, is we see a lot of old school relocation going on, okay, and that's fine, um, but it's it's sort of oversupply in a way. Uh, you get these very expensive relocation programs. You get everybody thrown in at the the assignee. Um, I looked at, at one case. I mean, it was a while ago, but you know the poor assignee had. Uh, 29 points of contact i mean it was a you know it was it was a family but 29 points of contact and he turned around to me and it wasn't one of my clients i hasten to add um but he turned around to me and said you know so what what do these people do where, where do they come from um you know <laughs> how how do what do they exist on sort of thing and why I are mean, they bothering me <laughs> and why they're bothering me yeah yeah i mean it was over enthusiasm is the way i describe it um uh so that's still that's still there i mean it's, you know the, the industry's moved on a lot but the 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 analogy i use it's it's like um the industry is like this massive oil tanker uh going up the suez canal and things start to change and it's got to turn around and maneuver and yeah. it can't and you know what uh -huh. occasionally it gets stuck and yeah. you know it has to be dug out so the famous British tabloid uh, quote on that was a little tractor trying to dig out this massive, great you know, thing. It was, was that, you know, we need a bigger digger. Um, 
And it's it was sort of fun. But the point is, we're very agile and mobile. We don't need any of that. We haven't got the baggage. Now, I'm not saying you no, know, we're suitable for every relocation. Uh, we're really good on on um, interns, graduates, um, project based relocation, and relocation where you don't need to roll out the red carpet. You just need to get from A to B and get the basics done in the best way with the best technology and having the best experience. Uh, that's what we're all about. We're not rolling out the red carpet yet, although watch this space, okay. <laughs> um, but we're focusing really on the more sort of everyday types of, of, of relocation. And they're slightly different, you know, international is different from domestic, but they both apply. And the other interesting thing about technology, about mobile technology, you know, uh, mobile phones that we you know, you see that's coming up, but is that everyone uses them. Um, it's non-generational. So it doesn't matter. You know, we always used to think, I didn't particularly, but a lot of people used to think, oh, it has to be Gen Z. It has to be the millennials. You know, those are the guys. Well, on a mobile phone, it's it's everybody. If you can text and you can type and you can use a phone and you can use a video phone, like you know, sort of we are on the computer on the phone, and you're moving, guess what? You're a potential customer. It's non-generational. Talking with James Moss and absolutereload.com. Go check it out. James, thanks for being my guest again on global hr business which is global tv talk show thank you yes okay all right we'll see you in new york on march 13 at our meeting our live in-person meeting and you're going to be a speaker yeah excellent looking forward to it thank you bye-bye yes